On this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to fix those huge gaps on your door casing. In this case, I have about a one inch gap that tapers through, so stay tuned. Welcome to Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, consider pressing the subscribe notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. So, as you can see, I just installed my door casing and it left this huge gap. So, unfortunately, on older houses, the walls are not squared, so it pretty much tapers on. So, we, we got our door casing on, and right when we put it right against where the mark it's a quarter inch on each edge right here, so we can have that quarter inch reveal. But right when you put it on through here, look what happens. You have this gap all the way to this one side. But if you look at the casing of where it sits on here, it's pretty flushed. But as it goes to the left side, it starts tapering, starts getting bigger and bigger. These problems are very common on older homes. And then if you keep going down, it tapers down to a quarter inch. So one of my go-to when I start filling gaps on any trim or door casing, I use this backer rod. They come in different sizes. They have a quarter inch, half inch, up to one inch. So if you're interested in all the materials that I use in this video, I'll leave the link on the description down below. I have a bunch of this wood filler and it's stainable. You can paint right over this one. And I'm just going to be using this to fill in. I prefer actually using this to fill in the gaps. Also, I'm going to be using this 120 grit sandpaper. You can use a lower or coarser version, but a 120 should do the trick. What you're going to do is you're going to sand off the excess, but still maintaining that quarter inch to an eighth reveal. Just make sure that you have a good even out reveal all throughout so i'm going to focus on the edges so a good trick to this is you fold it in half and then putting on in your sanding block sponge this will help have a nice firm edge so that when you start grinding or start sanding you have a nice perfect squared edge to have that reveal showing So again, just take your time and then afterwards you're going to touch it up. I have this 10 in 1 tool. I'm going to be using that to square off the edges to make those nice sharp edge corners. So as you can see here, you can actually use it to scrape off any excess too that you might have put on over. But in this case, I just like using it. You can use a chisel or any type of pretty much a putty knife to do this. But I find that the 10 in 1 tool does a really nice job on cleaning up the inside corners as well. So just take your time, finesse it, and make sure that you get rid of all the excess as well. So here you go. We're doing another touch up on the bottom portion. Add a little bit of excess in the bottom. Make sure you put a good drop because you're going to be creating a lot of dust doing this. And then it's good to also have a spray bottle to get and maintain and calm down all the dust. Then you're going to go and vacuum up all the excess as well. When you're done with that, you should have a nice clean area. Sure, you're going to have little cracks here and there, but it's a lot more sturdy, stronger, and a lot more smoother now that if you look at it, as you can see, we cleaned it up really well. But we are not done yet. Looking all the way around here, it looks like we've done a really good job, but I didn't really actually fill in the areas right here because we are going to use caulking for that. But before we go and caulk anything else, we're going to go and put a good masking around. I use this um, Extreme Stretch by DAP Caulking. I really like this. This is my preferred to whenever I'm caulking around the interior. This is good for exterior as well, but I like to use this a lot. I'll leave the link on the description down below for this product. And we're just going to apply caulk. So this is a secondary thing. You don't have to do this, but in my case, I like to do this so I have a nice smooth transition from what I just built up to the to the door casing as well. So here we go. You're just going to take off the excess again, finesse it right when you're done. Now it's time to paint and apply that first coat. So I'm just going to apply it with the brush on those sharp corners. Make sure you touch up and make sure you fill it up really, really well.
sure you focus on the edges as well those inside corners again the first coat it's gonna suck up a lot of that paint so it's gonna be really that first layer of the uh, wood filler is very very thirsty so it's gonna soak up all the moisture on your first coat so if you have any primer as well that will work as well if you want to use a primer in this case i'm just gonna do double coats of paint and this should be okay so running it through with a roller brush will give it that nice consistent texture like if you do have a special type of texture that you want it all depends on the roller that you use but in this case we're just going to run it all throughout with a roller brush so we can have a nice smooth finish so looking at the final product it looks very unnoticeable and it looks like it blends in now the other option number two i actually made a video on this on a much more detailed how to do this where you're just going to fill the rest with the backer rod again i didn't have a, i only had about a half inch backer so i had to twist it to make it fit but again this is the other option what you're going to do is you're going to build it up with caulking now be prepared you're going to be using a lot of caulking in this second method if you do choose to do this you're going to be using your putty knife just so that you can clean up all the edges and then you're going to just continue filling it with much much caulking just so that you can build it up so the more backer rod that you put the less caulking you will use and then you're just going to finesse it with your putty knife make sure that it is nice and squared again when this dries Sometimes it does tend to shrink, so you might have to go back again and reapply a second coat of caulk and then build it up just like this. And just like what you did on the first one, right when this dries, you are going to apply paint. Again, make sure that you have a good primer and then you paint it over again with a secondary coat. So there you have it here's the final product for the method option two again this hasn't been painted yet you wait for it to dry then you apply your paint as you can see it has a fairly good texture a good smooth into it but in my honest opinion i like to do method number one because it's a lot cleaner and there you go method number one which i prefer where you're gonna go and paint it up as well so whether you choose method number one or method number two it, it is totally up to you in my opinion and in my choice i prefer method number one so once again friends let me know in the comment section below which method you prefer and if you found this video helpful please hit that big thumbs up subscribe and press that notification bell and i'll see you friends on the next diy video